Six-time La Liga champions and one of the most decorated football clubs in Spain, Valencia have a complicated history with both achievements and hardships. While their most successful spell came in the 1940s where they won three Spanish titles in five years, they also neared the mountaintop of European success in the early 2000s. Back-to-back -back Champions League final appearances in 2000 and 2001, along with an additional two La Liga titles in four years, Valencia were flying high. However, financial troubles forced the club into selling some of their best players, and as a result, Valencia have yet to reach the same levels of success. One could argue that history has repeated itself numerous times for Valencia, as just in the last decade they have parted ways with exceptional players, including David Villa, David Silva, Juan Mata, Jordi Alba, and most recently, Rodrigo and Ferran Torres. In this career mode, we'll acknowledge the club's current financial situation, look to turn it around, and begin the rebuilding process to return Valencia as one of Spain and Europe's footballing giants. Hey, what's going on everyone? Flick here. Welcome to the first episode of our FIFA 21 career mode with Valencia. While I've been pretty set on doing a La Liga career mode for some time now, there were a few teams in the running, but ultimately, I think that the current situation in Valencia is going to make for a very interesting career mode. Not only will we have the challenge of financial restrictions, but we'll also be looking to develop some high potential players along the way. But if this is your first time to the channel, I want to give you a big welcome and also overview the format that we do for these career mode saves. These are the settings that we'll be using, pretty normal stuff, ultimate difficulty, and we will have a couple of sliders enabled that I'll be covering later on. Five minute halves for me, but of course that will be condensed into some highlights for you all. Using euros for the currency, European competitions are enabled along with the opening transfer window. We've also enabled international job offers because I've been thinking about doing an international management aspect of the save, and I think this might be the one to do with Valencia if we can develop some good Spanish players. Along with that, we have set negotiation strictness to loose. The only reason for that is because when set to strict, I feel like the transfers that you can make are a little bit too limited. We're going to try to make realistic transfers, but by applying loose settings, we can make more transfers happen. Each one of these episodes will be going over half a season. So for this first video, we're going to be going from the summer transfer window up until January, and then in episode two, we'll pick up in January, go until the end of the season. We'll keep on repeating that for however many seasons we decide to do on this save. And just like each of my previous crew modes, this save is going to be very interactive. At the end of every episode, when I make it live, I'll be looking through the comments section, looking out for any potential transfers you guys wanna see, and also for press conference questions. This is just another way for you all to see the behind the scenes of the save and get a little bit more insight on specific topics. If you are excited about this crew mode and are looking forward to a long save with Valencia, make sure you leave a like on the video. It's a massive help to the channel and also consider subscribing so you stay up to date when these videos go live. Valencia have some interesting choices in their starting 11 to begin the save, and as you might expect, I have made some modifications to the squad to reflect a higher overall rating. At the end of the day, we simulate a good number of our matches, only choosing a select few to highlight for the gameplay portion of the episode, so we need to make sure that we have a high enough overall rating at each position. But at the same time, I do want to reflect some realism in this save. For example, our goalkeeper, Hyame, has been the first choice keeper for Valencia, despite having the overall rating between him and Sillison. He also has a real face in game, so I've decided to go with him between the sticks. But at the left back position is potentially the most important player in our squad. Gaia is a product of Valencia's Youth Academy, and he is also the highest overall rated player in our team and club captain. So I'm not sure if he's going to be staying with us the entirety of this save. I'm sure some other top clubs in Europe are interested in picking up his signature and adding them to their team. But to start off this crew mode, he's definitely going to be part of our starting 11. Transitioning to our center backs, at left center back, we have Mangala. Not the best rating, but he is left footed, which I do like for these left center backs. Paulista is another solid player in the team, 82 rated, and he's still got a couple of good years ahead of him at 29 years old. So more or less, this is going to be his peak rating. But at the right back position, a slightly older player in the squad with this. He's very well rounded for his statistics and he could definitely be used as a center midfielder. But for now, we'll be keeping at the right back position. If y'all don't know, my first name is Jason and I thought it was pretty funny to see this player in our squad. Not a bad right mid option. Uh, we might end up converting him to a right winger because his defending is quite low. But maybe y'all can provide some suggestions in the comments section if you have any development plan ideas but moving to our midfield we've got a couple of players if we can get there Soleil another very important player to this Valencia team well rounded in his statistics has generated some interest from other European clubs but we're going to have instructions on him to get more involved in the attack compared to Rotic who is going to stay a little bit more back and provide cover for our defenders what has arrived at Valencia a couple of seasons ago from PSG 
has really all the right statistics that you want in a winger or even a striker. He's pacey, good shooting, passing, and dribbling stats. Four star, four star for the skill moves and weak foot. And I bet he can net some goals for us this season. We've got a unique partnership for our strikers. Lee is a former high potential player, still not bad potential, but not as good as he used to be. Maybe we can see a revival in his career of sorts and he can find some good form in this career mode save. And finally, we have Moxie Gomez, who is more of a target man compared to Lee, who has more instructions to get him behind. But Gomez, another very high potential player in this team. I'm also going to spend a little bit of time covering our substitutes and reserves, not as much time as our starting 11, because we've got a lot to get through in this first episode. But starting off with Silicon, I'm considering transfer listing him because there's no reason for him just to be sitting on the bench. He's starting for the Dutch national team, and he should be starting for some club, and we can receive a good amount of funds for him. Gilamon, a high potential center back that I definitely plan on incorporating into the squad eventually. Jerushev, another good left mid option and former Real Madrid player, has been in La Liga for quite a few years now. Quandretti is a player for the future, and we don't have a lot of midfielders, particularly center midfielders in this team, so definitely plan on giving him some minutes. Musa is uh, the, I believe, the only U.S. men's national team player and American in this squad. At just 17 years old, he got the call up to the U.S. men's national team senior squad. I don't know if he's made an appearance yet for the first team, but definitely someone that I want to develop being an American myself. Uh, it would be nice to see him play a starting role in this career mode. Kevin Gamero, a striker of FIFA's past, not quite as pacey as he used to be, but still should be a reliable option for us at striker. Closing out Vallejo for our substitutes. And then for the reserves, I'm just going to be scrolling through each of these players. If you do want to take a closer look, I recommend just pausing the video. And you never know, some of these guys might end up playing a bigger role in the squad than I plan on them being right now. Uh, but we have some good squad depth in this Valencia team, and we'll find out who ends up being the important players for us. Some of you may be interested in knowing what the tactics instructions I plan on using for this save, so I'll spend a little bit of time covering that as well. I don't think I've made any changes to the tactics we're using balance with the width and depth sets of four and then for the offensive tactics with again sets of four players in the box sets of four corners and free kicks are on three for the roles we've got guy of course as our captain lee on most of these set pieces except for the long free kicks so lay will be taking the penalties and then we've got a left footed player taking the left corner kicks a right footed player taking the right corner kicks with this 442 formations i do recommend modifying a couple of the instructions including getting your fullbacks on both join the attack and overlap. As long as you have enough defensive cover, that's going to provide you with a lot of options in the attack. For the wingers, we're going to have them on cut inside for both the right and left midfielder. Our center defensive mids have a kind of a combination of two different tactics. Stay back while attacking for our more defensive minded one. Get forward for the more attacking minded one. And again, a good combination of instructions for our strikers. Gomez is going to be the target man between the two and Lee has instructions to get him behind. I tend to set my own challenges over the course of each season, but board objectives are something that I still plan on paying attention to in order to keep our manager rating high enough. For youth development, we need to sign four players to basically goalkeeper, defender, midfielder, and forward position. For brand exposure, we need to maintain seven clean sheets in home matches, as well as sign two players of a different nationality from that of the club, so non-Spanish players. Financially, we need to make a three million profit from youth academy sales within two seasons. I still have a lot of trouble managing to complete this objective. I feel like it's bugged, even if you do end up getting those Youth Academy player sales. But moving on to the domestic objectives, we're looking to finish mid-table as well as reach the round of 16 of the Copa de España. And a very long-term objective of within three seasons, the board is expecting us to finish in a top four or UEFA Champions League position. With that said, we don't have continental objectives yet. Once we qualify for Europa League, or Champions League, that of course will change. Considering that we only have the expectation of finishing mid-table and the club's current financial situation, I was very surprised to see the budget that we've got available in this save. I don't think it truly reflects what's happening at Valencia. So for this first season, I definitely don't plan on using all 60 million in our transfer budget. That can just carry over to future years. I think it would be good though to develop our youth academy and hopefully sign some players that could grow into the first team over the course of this save. We start off with a four-star, four-star scout from Spain. We'll be keeping that scouting network in his home country for six months, looking for any type of player. But I did also manage to find a couple of high-rated scouts that we can disperse in January. I'll be relying on the comment section and your suggestions in order to figure out where we want to establish some more scouting networks. So if you have any recommendations, 
make sure you put what country you want me to scout and what type of player you think I should look for. But as part of our pre-order bonus in FIFA 21, we do also start off the save with a homegrown talent. This is a player with loads of potential. And as you can see, Rafael Carrillo doesn't have a torso. It's a glitch that's in FIFA 21, unfortunately, but we will be able to slightly fix that. Anyways, I was very excited to see that he starts off as a left midfielder. I find the majority of these players are central and this is the first YouTube series save that we actually have a winger to start off with. As far as development plans go, I was thinking of using this wide midfielder to help boost his passing and dribbling statistics. And conversely, there is also the inverted wide midfielder plan, which will boost some of the shooting, passing, and dribbling statistics. Depending on how we want to use our wingers, I think both would be good options. But if you have any feedback about that, again, feel free to leave a comment. I always get questions about training and the tactics I use are pretty routine. For the instructions, I've got rest day, recovery day, and intermittent training. And then what I typically do is just play through three of the drills, one of which with only two players involved in order to get the maximum boost to the player's sharpness. And in my opinion, these are the three easiest drills to complete. You can get them done in about three minutes or four minutes time. And then you can just simulate them the rest of the way throughout your save. You only need to play through the drill once. And then after that, you're always going to get the best grade that you received. But it's time to get into some transfers. I expressed interest in transfer listing Jasper Sillison and we did receive an offer from Besiktas. Ended up being a swap deal that I found very interesting. If you've been playing Krumid for a couple of years, you might remember Ozekoop as a high potential player. He has dropped a little bit in his potential and he's now 27 years old to start off the save. But considering the lack of center midfield options we have in this Valencia team, I was all right with this swap deal. Maybe we can even revive the career of Ozekoop and help boost that overall and potential as a result of dynamic potential, which has taken over in some of our saves. But here's a look at the finalized deal, Besiktas and Valencia agreeing on terms. And we ended up receiving Ozyukup as well as 11 million for this deal. I didn't initially plan to transfer this Cherishev going into this save, but considering that our homegrown talent is a left midfielder and Cherishev is not our first choice option at that position, I thought this offer from Arsenal was very interesting. There's a handful of Russian wingers that have played for top European teams and Andrei Arshavin is definitely one of them at Arsenal. So the fact that they went in for another Russian winger in Cherishev was too much to pass up on. And we ended up agreeing to a transfer deal worth 7.7 .7 million. Now that we have started to let a couple of players go, I felt okay with denying the rest of the transfer offers. Jose Agaya also received a number of bits from the likes of PSG, Manchester City, and Real Madrid. But I don't want to completely disassemble this Valencia squad as of yet. I wanted to be realistic and transfer list some more players and not make too many signings. But now that we've done that, I think we can be a little bit more generous about the players that we bring in. But recapping some of the top deals in the summer, Sancho to Chelsea was the biggest transfer, 170.7 million there. But what I found really interesting are the signings that Real Madrid made. Both the fourth and fifth most expensive transfer by bringing in Skriniar and Obama Young. Here is a look at our transfers, just the one deal outside of the two that were highlighted. Esquerdo went out on loan to Basel. La Liga has a unique situation where, to my knowledge, every player has to have a release clause attached to their contract. So that's something I am going to try to replicate in this save. And Kevin Gamero has his contract expiring, so I felt like this is the right time to start talking about a release clause. If you have any suggestions how I might be able to implement that, feel free to leave it in the comments section. What I was initially thinking is to set the release clause as double their market value, and then we can revisit each player's contract at either the start or the middle of each season. We're met with an unexpected surprise. Mangala, our starting left center back, will be missing three months with an MCL injury. And as a result, Guillemon will need to step up at that position earlier than I would have liked, but what better way than to Put him into the starting 11 to help improve his overall rating. Today's gameplay will focus exclusively on La Liga. That's the only competition we're involved in in this first half of season one. But I also wanted to cover the slider settings that we'll be using for this save. This is the same one we were using toward the later stages of Wolfsburg. I find that these work pretty well. And to sum it up, we have both a higher shot and pass error. That means we are not going to convert as many chances in front of goal. And we also have the computer defenders not pushing up quite as much, which should make counterattacking more difficult. But I'll be catching up with y'all in a little bit of time. We'll cover the gameplay and recap at the mid-season mark. 
Our first match of the La Liga season will be against Huesca, who are one of the newly promoted sides to the top division of Spanish football. And while we have had to make some adjustments to our starting 11, I felt like this was the perfect opponent for us to get used to this Valencia side and how we play in game. It took a while for highlights to get started in this one, but in the 22nd minute, it's Guedes who does well for us to win back possession. Unfortunately, defended by Huesca and kind of a sign of how they played in this match as now Voss pushing up from the right back position. We do have instructions for him to overlap and join the attack as he pretty much creates this opportunity. It really was all us in the first half as again, it's Guedes trying to cut inside and maybe get a finesse shot effort into the back of the net, but saved by the keeper. And now it's Huesca who finally get a highlight. It's Okazaki who manages to find some space and get the first goal of the match. That's a crucial goal for Huesca as they try to stay up in La Liga this season. But for us, we need to find a way to get back into this match. 56 minutes in, we try to respond as now it's going to be Lee, who does a nice bit of dribbling to create space. Carrillo is our homegrown talent that we decided to substitute on just about getting an assist there. But unfortunately, we overcommit defensively and a nice pass by Huesca. Once again, they were critical with their chances as they will double their lead in the 63rd minute. I don't know if the scoreline was a fair representation of how we were actually playing in game as we look to make some changes. Musa coming on at the right mid position. I was thinking that maybe bringing in some youth and energy into the side might lead to some goals as one of our younger strikers, Lee, does a nice one-two pass with Guedes and we will manage to cut the deficit in half. I do like the fact that we've got a left-footed striker playing on the left, a right-footed striker playing on the right so that we can get these efforts across goal which tend to be effective in FIFA 21. But still some time in this one to try to make the match level. It's Musa from the right mid position, cutting in and trying to do something similar to what Guedes did earlier on the match, maybe getting a finesse shot effort off. But he is fouled just outside the box. Unfortunate for that not to be called a penalty kick and not even a card given to the Huesca defender as that was not a great tackle. But we have Lee on set pieces and unfortunately this one will be going well over the crossbar as now it's going to be Guedes. He's been an impact player for us. I think I even moved him to the striker position as this, at this point, as it's Soleil who managed to get the equalizer for us in the 86th minute. We left it late, but we still find that crucial second goal. At this point, I was happy to have at least gotten one point, but with that said, we could have definitely gotten a third goal. We're applying some pressure on Huesca's defense, and for whatever reason, the ref calls for full time. Unfortunate scenes, as I think we could have scored from that opportunity, but not a bad start to our La Liga season. And I think this is a result that we can build upon. Even from a statistics perspective, I was pretty happy with how we played in this one, getting a good amount of shots on target. We're never really going to hang on to the majority of possession on ultimate difficulty. And another good match here as we've got a decent opponent in Sevilla. They've had success both domestically and continentally as of late, winning Europa League last season IRL. And as far as this save is concerned, they are sitting sixth place in La Liga. We've had an all right start to our campaign, currently in 14th place above the relegation zone, but below our mid table objective that we have set out for us. You could make the argument that Sevilla is even stronger this season than they were last year, making some notable transfers like Acuna at the left back position. It is going to be none other than Sevilla's new transfer who carries the ball forward and sets up Idrisi with a chance to play the ball inside giving De Jong an opportunity to get on the goal scoring sheet, a proven goal scorer for Sevilla, but we get away with a couple of chances there as that effort is saved by Jalma and we will get our opening highlight now. It's Rakic playing through Gamero, decided to give him the start in this one just to try out some new tactics. And one thing I like about him is that he offers a good amount of pace despite being 31, 32 years old. He has pace in the 80s, and that has proven to be a good way for us to score goals. Of course, Sevilla won't be having that, and they are going to continue how this match pretty much started with more highlights for them. Really a scramble inside the box, as eventually this one is going to fall to Rakitic, who manages to get the equalizer for them in the 29th minute. A good run and a good finish, and there's really not much that our goalkeeper could have done about that from that close of a range. But we will get another opportunity before the halftime break. Gamero finding Soleil. He's going to hold it up. Some quick one-touch passing. And Rasic should have done better with this chance. But to be fair, he's our center defensive midfielder. This first half truly had no shortage of highlights as this is a bit better from Rasic. Winning back possession for us in that slide tackle. And Gomez showcasing some of his dribbling ability. We have him set to be more of a target man for us. But from time to time... I think he has the technical ability to pull off those sorts of efforts 
as this was a good chance blocked and eventually cleared by Sevilla. And finally, we are into the second half. And I don't know what it was about this match, but Gomez continues to show his versatility, a good amount of pace to get away from the Sevilla defender, and we managed to get the go-ahead goal in the 54th minute. Judging how this match was going, a one goal advantage was less than ideal, so we tried our best to push on and maybe get a third goal, as Gaia sets up a great chance for Gomez, the opportunity going off the crossbar and eventually cleared away by Sevilla. But this last highlight will again be for Sevilla. It's Jesus Navas pushing up from the right wing back position, using some good dribbling to get around our defenders. And this ended up being a huge save from Haume. We put our confidence in him at the start of the season, and it seems to have paid off as we play another great through ball here, this time to Guedes. And he spots out the run from Gomez in the middle. The effort going over the crossbar, but thankfully the ref will call for full time at that point. So while it would have been nice to get a third goal in this one, we will definitely take the three points as this was a great win over Sevilla. Given the number of former Valencia players that are in this Villarreal squad, both Pareo and Calcolon just left Valencia in the latest transfer window. I knew I had to play at least one fixture against these guys. It probably won't be the last time that we feature a match against them in this career mode, but as things currently stand, we're on a fairly level playing field. We're sitting 11th in the table, they're in 12th. This will definitely be one of the most anticipated matches of the season, and hopefully one of our former players don't give Villarreal the leg up in this one. Given how well the partnership of Gamero and Gomez worked in the last match, I decided to keep it for this one, and we'll utilize that pace of Gamero to burst down the left side, now working the ball around, and eventually it's going to be Musa to find the on-running Vas at the right back position. He'll play across. It is going to be a bit of a scramble inside the box, really not doing well to clear the effort. And eventually, it falls to Gomero. I decided to just hit it first time, see what happens. And it ended up being a really advantageous opportunity as this goes off the post and into the back of the net. Slowly but surely, I'd like to see Musa as our starting right midfielder. Right now, he just doesn't have the overall rating that will help us get results. But in the future, I think he definitely has more potential than a lot of our other options at that position as he was a big part in this second goal. Eventually, it's so late to find the back of the net, but we can't create these efforts without the help of our midfielders. As now it is going to be Sole looking to provide an assist, except it's going to be a nice clearance by Albiol. And finally, Villarreal will get an attacking chance of their own, playing some nice passes. Unfortunately, though, for Paco Alcacer, he was just offside. One thing I'm starting to notice about this Valencia side is the number of attacking options we have moving forward. Guedes is very gifted in his shooting stats for a winger. And if we do manage to retain him here at Valencia, I can see him scoring a number of goals along with the number of assists that he manages to create. As it's Soleil pushing up from that center mid position, we do have the instructions on him to get forward. So he's going to be the more goal scoring of our midfielders as we just were unable to get a third goal in this match. But we're going to see the first time our homegrown talent be substituted on and actually make an impact on these highlights as Musa will find Gamero. We're going to work the ball around and now it's going to be Carrillo cutting in from the left mid position. Of course, he is right footed, so he's getting it on his strong foot there. And a decent finesse shot effort saved well by the Villarreal keeper. Another late substitution as we see the first of Koba Condretti in this career mode. A younger player in this Valencia side, but one that I think has a bright future. Of the couple of clips that I've seen from him, he seems to offer some good technical ability and someone that we can definitely use in the midfield moving forward. But Villarreal do manage to get a goal back courtesy of Carlos Baca. The only thing that we weren't able to defend in that scenario was the over-the-top through ball, and of course, that's exactly what they did. Uh, but here in the 83rd minute, it is actually going to be Condretti moving forward. I think we brought him on for Soleil, so he's got the instructions to get involved in the attack and this effort going just wide. It does look like we'll be able to see out this victory, though, as Oziokup pushes the ball forward. As a squad rotational player, you might see him in a couple of highlights in this first season. I don't think he'll be breaking into the first team all that often unless injuries do happen. But we do manage to get a third goal and this cool cutscene courtesy of Musa. I'd appreciate your feedback in the comments section how often you want to see Musa featured in these gameplay matches. I think for a lot of the simulations, he's just not going to cut it for his rating. But in the future, that, of course, will change. And Valencia are starting to incorporate him a lot into their starting lineup. So if we can replicate that in this crew mode, that might be ideal. But a big win here against the team that I think will be our rivals throughout this save as we pick up three points against Villarreal. Over the course of these first few months, we got an update about some of the players that we have here on loan. 
both Mingontes and Garcia are not too highly rated. And as a result, I didn't really feature them in that many matches. So it looks like they'll be going back to their parent club in the January transfer window. But I thought I would close out the gameplay for today's episode with a match against one of Spain's strongest teams, Real Madrid. Their starting lineup is world class, and they have actually made some improvements by bringing in Skriniar at the left center back position. And with the way that things are going, it looks like Real Madrid might be winning La Liga this season. They are undefeated, six points clear at the top with one less match played. We are slowly starting to creep our way up now into ninth place. If we can somehow make the push for Europa League, I think that would be a big achievement for us. But we'll just have to see how things go. Getting a favorable result against the top team like Real Madrid away from home at the Stadio Bernabeu would be a huge start. A promising start for us as just five minutes in, some quick passes will lead to a ball played out wide to Hassan. I feel like the spotlight has sort of been stolen by Musa at the right mid position, but Hassan is still a very good player for us moving forward. Someone that will be utilized quite a bit in this career mode as he has a decent rating in the mid 70s. But this press from Real Madrid was absolutely relentless. They seem to win back possession so many times, including this one in the final third. And on the ensuing corner kick, it's going to be Modric who plays a pass to Hazard. It needs to be a good save from Jaume. As we get a couple of few minutes later and it's Gedges who spots out the gap in the Real Madrid defense. Gamero is just the right player we want in this situation. The pace was just too much for them to handle. And we do manage to get a big goal. Maybe this will be the difference maker in the match. I found if you can get the first goal against the computer, then they tend to push more players forward, which can either be a good thing or a bad thing for us. On one hand, counterattacking should be much easier. On the other, I expect Real Madrid to continue pressing us and keep getting shots on target like this one. Had to be a good save from Jaume to keep our clean sheet as we try to get into the halftime break with the advantage. Another good save from Jaume on his near post. Unfortunately, though, on the ensuing corner kick, it's Benzema who manages to make contact with the ball. And although it had to be a goal line decision, it did go in Real Madrid's favor as they found the equalizer here. With a whole nother half to play, I felt like this match could go either way. We get off to a good start here in the 53rd minute. Guedes again trying to send it across to Gomez. And I still feel like we need to find the perfect tactic for him to increase the number of goals he can score as we do, unfortunately, concede a second goal courtesy of Cruz. It was one that we just didn't close down the space quick enough and you can't give a player of his caliber that sort of space he's only going to find the back of the net. With about 17 minutes left to go in this one, we'll do our best to respond and try to find the equalizer as a dangerous set piece from Real Madrid, the header going just wide from Jovic. But we will end up getting an attacking chance in the 88th minute. Time is not on our side at this point and it's Gamero who got the first goal for us and unfortunately in a good goal scoring position, was unable to slot that chance away. A pretty decent outing from us in this episode as far as the gameplay is concerned. Two wins, a draw, and a loss against some quality opposition. But at this point in the episode, we'll get into the mid-season recap, cover how things are going for us in the league table, as well as talk about some of the top goal contributions as well as assists. Real Madrid have continued their unbeaten streak in La Liga, seven points clear of second place Atletico Madrid, but no sign of us in the first portion of the table we're a little bit lower, exactly mid-table in the 10th place spot. Not a bad outing from us by any means, and pretty much clear of the relegation zone, which was the top objective for us. If we could push on and try to finish in an even higher spot, that would be amazing. But as things currently stand, it's Osasuna, Elche, and Cadiz who are in bottom three. Kevin Gamero has stepped up and has been the top scorer for us so far in this Valencia save. Soleil right behind him with four goals and Guedes in third with three goals. As for assists, it's Guedes who is top there with Soleil and Gomez behind him with two assists. We managed to find a couple of good prospects from Spain in these opening six months. The top talent actually being a goalkeeper, which in my opinion is an area that we need to add some more squad depth. And honestly, that mustache alone is enough to promote Javi Gallardo. So I think he's someone that will look to promote to the senior team in episode two and maybe send out on loan so that we can boost his overall. But I want to give a big thanks to channel members for helping to support the channel. If you are interested in learning more about that program, there's a link in the description talking all about it. But this is the Valencia squad that we've managed to develop half a season into season one. A couple of players going up in their rating and some promising signs for us. But if you did enjoy this opening episode of the Valencia career mode, make sure you leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. But until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you all again soon.